So what we're going to do is, given a string, we're going to be looking for the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. So for instance, if you gave me, the, if I gave you the string a b c a b c b b, uh, the length of the longest substring there is three. So there's a b c where it doesn't have any repeating characters in there, and there's a few other ones like that. Um, so your function would take that as input and then just return the length of that string, which is three. Awesome. Um... Hey, Tommy, how are awesome. you? Awesome. How's it going? Good. Uh, how's good. your going? I'm good. It's a sunny day still in San Francisco, so I, I'm loving it. Beautiful. It's uh, kind of a gloomy day in New York, but still pretty warm, <laughs> so I'll take it. <laughs> nice. Well, well, thanks so much for, for jumping on the call. Let's, uh, let's jump into a coding problem. Awesome. All right. So it looks like you've got the REPLit set up. Notice you're set to Python. Is that the language you'd like to use? Yep. That's the language I'd like to use, if that sounds good with you. Perfect. That's good with me. Cool. Um, so just thinking through this question a little bit, I guess um, a few clarifying questions. Yeah. Uh, so we just want to find the length, right? We don't care about returning like one or all of like the subsequences that match that length. Yep, that's right. Awesome. Cool. Um, and then when it comes to the input, I see the example we have here is all lowercase characters. Should we assume that we're going to get all lowercase characters as input, or do we want to handle um, kind of like sanitizing that input? Yeah, that's a good question. You can assume the input's all lowercase. Awesome. Cool. Um, and I guess, could the input be empty, like the empty string? Uh, it could, in which case you return zero. Awesome. Cool. Um, Great, I think that covered all of my questions. So maybe then just to give a few examples. So ABC, ABC, BB, the answer would be three, the output that we want to give. Um, if we have all repeating characters, the output would be um, just one, I'm assuming. Yep, that's right. Awesome. Um, and conversely, if we have all different characters, the output would be um, six in this case. Yep. Um, and then, as we said, if we get the empty string, the output would be zero. Um, yeah, awesome. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, to cut, When I'm kind of like looking at this um, initial string and problem, I guess the first instinct that I have for like the very naive solution is that, um, you know, kind of brute force, we can just um, get all of the possible like subsequences or substrings and check whether there are any duplicate characters within those substrings. So um, in the ABC, ABC, BB example, that would be first starting with every substring starting with A would be A and checking if that has any repeating characters then AB, um, it doesn't have any duplicate characters then ABC, it also doesn't have any duplicate characters then ABCA, which has duplicate characters. Um, and then every single one, A, B, C, A, B, would also have duplicate characters, given that the substring of that had them, and also that B is repeating, similar with A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, B, and A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. So um, it would be a very similar case if we started B and it's C. So it's kind of making me feel like um, the naive solution, we'd be kind of doing um, a little bit of like, work that is not useful. So um, if we could avoid that, that would be great. Um, reasoning a little bit over like that nice solution, brute force approach, going through um, all possible subsequences um, would be quadratic time. And then within that checking whether um, there are duplicate characters within each substring would be linear time. So in total, that probably would be um, n to the third. Um, so that is not great. So I'm gonna try to optimize that if we can. And um, kind of looking at this, um, the way I like described it starting at different points of the string, um, I'm starting to think maybe we could kind of like have a range for within the string that we track with kind of like a starting index and an ending index. And maybe we can like expand, um, start, you know, um, the start of the string and expand our ending index to the right. And the moment we kind of um, encounter a duplicate character or a repeating character, we start to um, kind of move our start index forward to try to get to a subsequence that doesn't contain that duplicate character anymore. And all the while, while we're doing that, keep track of like the longest encountered length. Um, and I guess I have another kind of assumption question is, could we use an extra data structure um, in this question? Yeah, that's totally fine. I think that that sort of sliding window you're describing, that sounds like a pretty good approach to me. 
Awesome. Yeah, I think for that sliding window, I'd like to use um, like a hash set uh, so that um, we can have um, pretty constant time and like looking up um, how often certain characters are within the string already. Um, and we can like do that, like look up very quickly. Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. So if that sounds good, I'm going to go ahead and define our function. Um, I'm going to call it length of longest substring. Um, we take in just one parameter, I'm assuming, which is the string. Yep. And then if we need to define like the output, which is an integer. Um, cool. So as I said, would love to use a hash set. So I'm just going to start by initializing it. Um, and um, can just initialize it all to zeros for now and um, count, uh, we're going to count um, how many occurrences of each character that we encounter happen within um, the substring. And I'm going to multiply that by 128, 128 because I know that we have um, 128 ASCII characters. Um, so just to start off, initialize it to that. Um, and then going to define the length. Um, which we're going to want to track of that longest substring, then define up to zero, getting some, uh, oh, okay, variable sign, but never used. That's okay, because we haven't used it yet. Um, and then I'm um, going to use the kind of start and end index like approach that I described with like that sliding window. So um, the start index, maybe I'll just call it left for 30. Um, I'm going to assign that to zero. And then what we want to do first to start going through the string, um, we can do it in a few ways, um, while loop, but maybe I'll do a for loop to start. So um, you can say for right, and right is referring to my end index, which I described for right in range of um, the length of the string. Um, thankfully, saw Connor's previous interview, so I now know that we can <laughs> up here, but we can we have to do the length of the string. Um, and then the first thing I want to do in this case is to make sure that um, basically what we want to do is increment the count of the specific character that we're at by one. So in the cache set that we have. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say char is at, in, um, at s at index right because s is our string. Um, and we're going to increment that by one. Um, and that's okay because we've defined um, all the characters, uh, all of the um, essentially like fields in our hash set to be zero. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to take care of that case, which I mentioned earlier, which is if we encounter a duplicate character, um, kind of moving the left or the start index forward until we. Um, don't have a duplicate character anymore. And since we're using chars um, as our hash set, um, the way that we know that we've encountered more than one character is if um, chars at um, index right is greater than one. And so I'm gonna do a while loop here because um, we could have um, multiple repeating characters within the substring. So I wanna make sure that um, I get rid of all like potential uh, repeating characters or the repeating character could actually be at a later point in the substring. So I wanna get to that point and um, make sure I move the start index by um, enough characters forward. So um, the way we're going to do this is um, first we wanna update the um, count that we're keeping track of in our hash set for that specific character. Uh, so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna say char is at s um, at I think we I called it left uh, and it be minus equals one. And then um, what I'm going to do is to move left forward is I'm just going to increment um, left. Cool. And then um, one thing which I haven't done yet is I want to make sure I'm keeping track of the length, as we said earlier. Um, so the length um, at, at the first iteration will be um, we've initialized it to zero. And then first time we calculate it, um, the length between two indexes in a string typically is um, the ending index minus the starting index plus one because strings are zero index. So in our case, it's right minus left plus one. Oh, if I could spell correctly, that would be great. And then um, what I'm gonna do so that we always keep track of like the biggest, um, the maximum possible length is I'm gonna use the max function and say 
want to take like the max of either the current length or um, or the length that we make keep track of or the current length but based on the right and left integers. And then I think last thing we want to do is um, return the length because we want to return that um, integer. Cool. Um, and I guess just a sanity check a little bit um, before I run this. Um, just going to do it with ABCA because it's a little bit shorter than ABCA, ABCD. Um, mm -hmm. So ABCA should be three, um, the output for that. So what we're going to do is um, when we start our for loop, um, we're going to um, say that char set A is equal to one. We're going to add one to that. Um, it's not greater than one in the first iteration. So um, what we're going to do is just take um, the um, length and like set it. And because right and left are zero at that first um, run through the for loop, it's going to be zero minus zero plus one. So length is going to be one at this stage. And then when we get to B, um, charge that B is going to be incremented to one. Um, charge that B still is not greater than one. So again, we're just going to jump its length. And at this point, it's going to be two because one minus zero plus one is two. Um, then we're at index two, which is the third character, which is C. So again, um, uh, setting charge at C to be one, and then it's not greater than one. So we just jump and then implement the length again to three this time because two uh, minus zero plus one is three. Um, and then in the final run through of that for loop, we're gonna encounter A again. And so um, charge at A is now equal to two, which is greater than one. So what we're gonna do is uh, decrement that. So again, charge at A becomes one, um, and we're gonna move our, um, forward, so, um, or left, sorry, our left um, index forward. Um, and uh, what we get now is that we want to take the max of either three um, or um, zero, one, two, three. Uh, so one, two, three, which again is going to give us a length three. Um, and we've run through um, basically all of the elements here. So what we're going to do is just return line three. So just by running through this simple example, I think this should work. And I'm going to write out some test cases. Um, so maybe I'll just print input um, and maybe just define our string here. First to be ABC, ABC, ABC. Um, our input is going to be string. And then we want to say length is equal to calling the function on string um, and finally print output to be um, length. Cool. Um, so may have some errors. I'm just going to run it through the first time and see what happens. And I see here that on line 14, we have list indices must be integers or slices, not strings. So looking at line 14, um, Oh, I think this is super interesting because I referred to ASCII characters in the beginning, but then I didn't really um, take into account that we can't have like um, a character itself as like the index, uh, but we have to, I think we have to use a function called ORD. Yep, um, that's right. Awesome. Yeah, I think that function returns an integer that represents the Unicode character. So what I want to do is I want to wrap ORD around every single time. Um, I'm using an index within chars. Um, those should be all the times. And then input ABC, ABC, DB, output three. Um, that's great. I'm just going to run through and add like a few more test cases, like the ones we mentioned. Uh, so DBB, um, ABC, DEF. Um, oh. And maybe just add the empty string for good measure to see if that gets us the right result. Uh, cool. So we get input BBB output one, which is great. Input ABCDF output six, which is great. Um, PWEKF, I think this is right. Yep, that looks right. KF, and then input empty string output zero. Um, Awesome. Are there, um, I think this looks good to me. Are there any other edge cases that um, you want us to take a look at? No, this this looks great to me. And I, I think you might have mentioned already, but what, what's the runtime of this final solution? Yes. So um, space complexity is 
think linear because you're using hash set and then time complexity. Um, so we have like one for loop and then, um, which is linear time and then searching within the um, hash set itself should be constant time. So um, I think it comes down still to like linear time. Uh, at most we have to go through each of the characters twice. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Well, also this, this looks great. Well, uh, th thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Of course, thanks so much too. Um, it was a fun problem to work through. Awesome, have a good one.